Welcome. We have arrived to the little hotel here. I've made a little road trip going solo. I got invited to go diving tomorrow, so made about an eight hour drive, rolled in. Uh, it's about 12.30 right now. I gotta wake up in like three hours. Not really gonna sleep, but should be exciting. This is my second time diving in Louisiana, uh, but I'm gonna keep this brief. I just wanna get to bed and get as much sleep as I can. And then in the morning, we gotta make about an hour and a half drive. So that's what we're doing. This is like a last minute trip. It's, it's been pretty hectic, so anyways, I'll see y'all in the morning. We are headed down to the jetties, following the boat in front of me. Weather is looking good, so it should be a good day. All right, well, we have arrived right there. You can actually see the last run of the 2020 Evan Roots. It is bright and early out here. We have a long haul ahead of us, over 50 plus miles. Didn't film much on the way out. It was a bit rougher than we expected, but I am hooking on a Mid Hayden right here. We're actually at a spot that the guys I'm with have never fished before. Testing out some new waters, trying our luck here. We're going to see if we can hook a couple snapper before we hopped in the water. And the structure here is actually some sort of layover or a rock pile. I don't really know. Uh, whenever we dove, it was a bit too murky to really see the bottom, uh, but we did mark some fish. I caught a snapper, and then I decided to put the GoPro on, and right here, I'm actually performing my good old circle hook hook set, just a slow pull up, and uh, this will be my second snapper of the day on the rod and reel. If you're wondering why I'm doing a voiceover here, the audio is absolute toast. I apologize. I'll get it together. I don't really know what was going on, but uh, once I get this one in, we're going to release it. We released the first one as well, as they are a bit too small for our liking. They're they're easily keepers, well over 16 inches, but we're trying to get some larger ones, such as the one we catch right here. This one actually goes 33 inches when we measured. Very promising sign for a new spot. And uh, after catching this one, we decide it is time to hop in the water. This spot has some potential, and who knows what we could see. On a rod and reel, you're pretty limited to what bites, but whenever you're actually diving, you can really see what's down there. But here we are, just jumped in the water with the flasher loaded up. There it is, unwinded, fluttering about, pulling in some bait fish. And once I go down, you can actually see the buzz bomb a little bit, and all the bait fish and snapper are coming up to investigate it. This is my second dive of the day. I'm really just going down to see if I can locate any structure on the bottom, but it does get a little bit hazy and murky, so I can't really make anything out there. Lots of bait fish, that's a very good sign. Huge bait ball right there. Pretty cool, uh, except I, just, I really can't see anything past that Merkler. But yeah, we're just kind of seeing what's up. The flasher is drawing in some fish. And with the amount of life here, there's definitely some sort of structure. We just can't really perceive it with all the Merk. So after peering around, I finally see a sizable snapper. I line up my gun, aim, take the shot, and I stone her dead. Perfect shot rolls over and I begin my ascent to the surface. Now if you didn't notice or see, it got very hazy down there right before I shot the fish. That was because I hit a very potent thermocline. That thing was so cold and uh, here we are, the fish is, is sharding all over me. But yeah, first snapper of the day, super pumped about it. Really nice shot. All the meat is good. It's super hazy down there. And uh, there's a shark coming up to check out the flasher. They were definitely just as curious as the fish. Sharks like my flasher too. Oh, yeah, right you can just grab that shaft. <laughs> Alright y'all, well, we just got out of the water, did a dive, got that big snapper. We're fishing right now, we're getting a few more in the boat. Uh, we got about five right now, I shot that one about 50 feet. Man, that flasher did some serious work, check this thing out. The boat right out here, actually the, uh, the shine kind of faded off, I don't know how or why, but still working, snapper. And uh, other fish, sharks, are all coming up and hitting it. As soon as I drop that thing down, just bait fish, snapper, everything, we're swarming it. Coming up and uh, dove down, saw that big red. It got real hazy. It was it was weird. It's like I didn't have my contacts in and uh, shot her. Luckily, stoned her, rolled her over, and uh, brought her back up to the surface. Got about five in the box right now. We're going to see if we can catch a few more. Then we're going to go back, pull up, do another drift, and see if we can shoot another one. So, so far, so good.
back in the water, new drift. Here I am loading up my roller gun, getting the flasher engaged. It got all sorts of jumbled up when we put it in the boat, but uh, it's going down there. It's not going to look exactly how we want, but it should still work. You can see right here the snapper are already piling in. Bunch of juveniles, a couple good shooters. You can see a couple nice sized ones here. Uh, I noticed my shark shell wasn't zapping me like it usually does when it bumps me. Uh, it looks like I have a faulty switch there, so shark shield isn't working at the moment. Keep that in mind. Uh, yeah, so I'm just sitting here. There's a nice snapper right there. I'm waiting on Joel to go down. He is up next. Nothing else in that drift, so we pull back up. Here I am pulling the flasher down. Still all tangled up. Uh, fish come back in. Check out the amount of fish here. Red snapper, bait fish, Spanish mackerel. Huge bait ball just all around the flasher. Joel's about to go down. Just that is insane right there. That is all because of that little flasher down there. If we didn't have that thing, our day would have probably been a lot slower. Yeah, Joel's going down right there looking for a snapper. Don't think he has any luck, so here I am going down. Diving down the flasher, a bunch of bait fish, a little red snapper right there. Going, going, looking around, little snapper, and I see this kingfish over here, but I go wrong by approaching it a little bit too quickly, too aggressively and uh, she kind of skirts away right there. So no luck there. Another drift, we did quite a few drifts here. I just cut all that out. Joel's going back down here, looking for a snapper. You can kind of see the bait ball down there. Going slow, nice and easy, looking around and doesn't see anything, so he heads back up. Here I am going down, right down the flasher. Typically you want to dive a little bit farther off the flasher, but I was noticing these big snapper were kind of hanging low beneath it. All the juveniles are up here as you can see. And I was having a luck shooting them doing this, so I just kept doing it. So I'm going down, I see the fish I want to shoot. There's a couple sharks looking around, um, practically swimming straight at the fish, so it makes a harsh turn cording away. But I managed the shot. Uh, shaft doesn't go all the way through, which concerns me a little bit, so I give him a lot of slack. I do not put any pressure on him. Come back up to the surface, and I hook my belt reel up here just in case he does get sharp. I do see quite a few uh, that you couldn't see on the GoPro, so I'm just trying to play this thing real safe, play her loose, not put a lot of pressure. And uh, it, th this thing is pulling pretty hard, so I actually think for a second that a shark might have gotten it. But that was probably due to all the line being out. So what I'm doing here is actually I let go of my gun and I'm running up my line, just working my way through to prevent it entangling in myself, uh, keeping it all behind me. You can see right there all the line is steering clear away from my body. And I'm just going to slowly work my way up to the fish, pull it in nice and easy, just so I can prevent a chance of the fish pulling out uh, since I don't really know the condition or state of the flopper. And there you go. You can see a glimpse of the fish. Uh, at this point, it's still staying on, so I figure I'm holding on to something. And here you can actually see that I made a good shot in the gill plate there, and the flopper is holding itself on that on that cheek right there. So uh, I'm still playing it nice and easy, pulling it up. I just want to grab the fish and push the flopper through to secure it. But this thing is insane. This one is sharding again. I don't know what that. It's just like white crap. I have no idea, but. Grab the fish by the eyes, push the shaft through, fish is secured. Biggest snapper of the day for myself. This thing ran 32 inches, so that's a pretty solid fish. Shot it at 42, 40 something feet. Here we are braining the fish, and uh, solid. That will be my red snapper limit for the day. Super cool diving, got her done. My flopper is almost through. I think I just gotta twist it a little bit. Our Louisiana snapper run got my two first red snapper pretty solid fish right there these were about 40 50 feet out in 70 foot of water there we go second time ever diving Louisiana we got out there threw the flasher in and the snapper came up instantly it was perfect like clockwork dude Well, there you have it. Louisiana spearfishing trip is complete. I had an awesome time. Stellar day, sublime conditions. We had that mean green water. You know, I'm, I don't know. I've always had a lot of success in, in green, green water. The fish just 
come close and there's quantities. There was no shortage today. As soon as I dropped that flasher down, the water just absolutely lit up. Bait fish, red snapper, Spanish mackerel, kingfish, and even sharks got fired up about that thing. Pretty pumped about that since I did just make that flasher a few videos back. If you haven't seen that and want to learn how to make it, I'm gonna put the video up here so you can check that out. But yeah, awesome day. Thank you, Joel, Josh, and Carter for having me. Hopefully it wasn't too much of a burden out there. I had a lot of fun, had a blast. It's really exciting to experience a new place, especially to go dive it. I've been here before once, but today, you know, as every spearfishing trip was a bit different, we went out and dove in the open water on a rock pile, and it was surprising. I'm not used to diving in 78 foot of water when we're 50 plus miles offshore. So in Texas, we're usually in the hundreds of feet range at that mile mark. So really exciting to get to go dive a spot not many people get to hit and actually get to and actually get to hunt most of the water column. So really awesome. Got some giant red snapper. Not too bad. Pretty fun diving. But I'm telling y'all, you saw in the video that flasher did some serious work. As soon as we dropped it down, the fish just swarmed. It was unreal. It was very, very surreal. Yeah, I just want to thank uh, Joel, Carter, and Josh once again. Had a blast. And uh, yeah, we're just gonna relax the rest of this evening. I'm at the motel here. Just made some chicken fajitas and uh, we got some nice weather out here. So pretty relaxing. And uh, yeah, hopefully you guys liked the video. If you did, please drop a like and drop some comments, suggestions on where I should go spearfish or fish next. I've had a lot of fun on this trip. Um, but I would like to hear y'all's suggestions on what you want to see and possibly where. So with that said, if you guys want to see more content in the like saltwater fishing, offshore spear fishing, jetty fishing, uh, or even anything related to hunting or maybe freshwater fishing, I don't know, uh, subscribe down below if you haven't and I will get those coming out. And I guess we're going to finish up here, get to sleep, and we have a long drive in the morning. So I will see y'all.